quick revision video on the equilibrium constant Kp. So what is Kp? It's an equilibrium constant in terms of partial pressures. And just like with Kc, the larger the Kp value, the further the equilibrium lies on the product side or to the right. And the Kp value is temperature dependent, so temperature will change the value of Kp. Concentration and pressure changes don't change the value of Kp. So how do you write expressions for Kp? So we'll use the Harbour process to go through this one. So Kp is equal to the partial pressures of the products over the reactants and we raise the partial pressure to the power of the number balance in the equation. So that little P stands for equilibrium partial pressures so they can be measured in any pressure units, pascals, kilopascals, atmospheres. We use round brackets not square ones because these aren't concentrations, they're partial pressures and beware heterogeneous equilibria we only include gaseous substances in Kp expressions. So moving on to the units now of Kp, that all depends on the powers in the expression. We'll do a couple of examples, so there's the first one. The Kp expression looks like that, and for these I'm saying that the partial pressures are in kilopascals. So before we do any cancelling, the Kp units are going to be kilopascals squared on the top, divided by kilopascals cubed on the bottom there. And that's because we've got squared, squared times to the power 1. When we cancel down, we get 1 over kilopascals. Bringing the kilopascals to the top becomes Kpa to the minus 1. And the Harbour process, there's the Kpa expression again. Units will be Kpa squared over Kpa at the power 4. Cancels down to 1 over Kpa squared, so Kpa to the minus 2 on the top. Before we move on to the calculations, we need to know about mole fractions and partial pressures. So we'll start with mole fractions, and I'm going to use air to illustrate this. So air is a composition of gases, so there's three of them, 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, 1% other. So how do you calculate mole fraction? Well, it's the number of moles of that component divided by the total number of moles. So because we're using percentages here, the total number of moles will be 100. So the mole fraction of nitrogen will be its um, number over the total of 100. So 78 over 100, 0.78, oxygen 0.21, and other will be 0.01. And a quick check you can always do in your calculations, your mole fractions should always add up to 1. So partial pressures now, the total pressure of a gas comes from the individual partial pressures of the components. So the individual contribution each gas makes to the total pressure is the partial pressure. So how do we work that out? Well, we take the mole fraction that we've just calculated and multiply that by the total pressure. So for the three components of air, we're going to get 78 kilopascals, 21 kilopascals, and 1 kilopascal. And another quick check you can do is that the sum of the partial pressures needs to equal the total pressure. So moving on to a Kp calculation now. So we're told that we've got 12 moles of SO2, 6 moles of oxygen. They're put in a sealed container, reach equilibrium, and at equilibrium 90% of the SO2 is reacted. Total pressure is 200 kilopascals. We're going to calculate Kp and its units. So it's an ice calculation, so we need to know the initial moles, the change in moles, and the equilibrium moles. So initially we've got 12 moles of SO2, 6 O2, and no SO3. 90% of those 12 moles are going to react, so 10.8 of the moles are going to go. So because of the mole ratio between SO2 and O2, we're going to have half as many moles of oxygen reacting. So it's going to drop by 5.4 moles. And SO3 is going to increase in moles by the same amount of moles of SO2 that's gone because of the ratio between those two components. So it's going to go up by 10.8. Obviously, the equilibrium moles is going to be the difference. So we get those numbers there. 
We now need to work out the total number of moles of equilibrium, so we just add those together. And the mole fractions now is going to be the components moles divided by the total moles. The partial pressures are going to be the mole fraction multiplied by the total pressure, which is 200 kilopascals. So we get those. And now we just substitute those into the Kp expression and we get a value of this. So I'm going to finish off the video by explaining the, the shift in an equilibrium in terms of Kp. So we're not going to use basic Le Chatelier's principle like you can at AS. We're going to actually bring in the equilibrium constant. So we need some basic facts about Kp and temperature. If the forward reaction is exothermic, Kp decreases at a higher temperature. If the forward reaction is endothermic, Kp increases at a higher temperature. So we're just going to use this generic um, gaseous equilibrium, A, in equilibrium with B, and we're saying that the forward reaction is exothermic, so its delta H would be negative. The Kp expression would obviously look like that. So let's suppose at 300 Kelvin, Kp had a value of 100, 500 Kelvin, it's gone down to 40. So if you think about it, the ratio of the partial pressures needs to change to give the new lower Kp value. Because these, this ratio here at 300 gave us 100 for Kp. So at the new temperature, the, this ratio is not going to, if it doesn't change, it's not going to give us 40. So how does it need to change? The denominator term needs to increase and bring down Kp to that new value. So how does the equilibrium do that? It shifts to the left. And of course, using basic Le Chatelier's principle, we already know that an increase in temperature will favour the endothermic direction. So we know that it's going to go backwards, but this helps us explain it in terms of the equilibrium constant. So nearly finished. The last thing we're going to look at is the effect of pressure on an equilibrium position. So we're using an actual equilibrium now. So there's the Kp expression for that one. So let's suppose while at the same temperature, that's really important, that's why I've got it in bold, at the same temperature, suppose the pressure of the system was doubled. So the first thing to say is changing the pressure doesn't alter Kp. So we've got to have the same Kp at the end of the pressure change. Now doubling the pressure will double the pressure of everything. So all those partial pressures are going to double. And you can see in the Kp expression, we've got a squared term on the top, but we've only got power 1 on the bottom. So the numerator term is going to be affected more because of that squared term. So that's going to effectively knock the system out of equilibrium. Kp will increase because the top of this is affected more than the bottom. And so the equilibrium position needs to shift to bring Kp back to its original value. So how does it do that? Well, the partial pressure of NO2 needs to decrease and the partial pressure of N2O4 needs to increase. So if that decreases and that increases, it's going to bring Kp back down to where it was. So the equilibrium does that by shifting to the left. And again, basic Le Chatelier's principle, an increase in pressure will always favour the side with the fewest moles.